So hopefully you watched my video on the P450 inducers because it is there where I talk about how the P450 system works, what it is, and why it's important and how it comes up on the USMLE. Very, very, very important you understand this because you will get a test question, I guarantee you, on this topic. So I'm gonna assume that you understand what the P450 system does and what an inducer would do and what an inhibitor would do. So an inhibitor obviously would block the effect of the P450 enzyme. And because the P450 enzyme is responsible primarily for inactivating drugs, if you inhibit something that inactivates a drug, well, then the drug level is going to go up. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about a patient who is on one of these classic P450 substrates. And there's a lot, but I just put some of the more commonly tested ones. Uh, and so what happens is that they're on one of those drugs then they get started on one of these P450 inhibitors, and now they're presenting with some sort of syndrome, some sort of presentation where the, the original substrate drug is too high. Uh, it's at levels that are too high because we have blocked the metabolism of that drug. Okay, so the mnemonic for the P450 inhibitors is pretty long, and you're just gonna need to know these drugs. Um, the mnemonic is helpful, but as I kind of told you in the inducer uh, talk, there are overlaps as far as the letters in these mnemonics, so you, you're just gonna have to remember uh, the drugs. The mnemonic will help you, but it's not gonna be enough. You're gonna need to know these drugs too. So the mnemonic is sick faces dot com. And there are two more that I want to bring up. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So the S stands for sulfonamides. This is very important. Remember when we talked about the inducers? There was an S and it sounded very similar. The inducer is sulfonylurea, totally different drug, totally different class of drugs. Sulfonylureas are for diabetes. Sulfonamides are antibiotics. Next, isoniazid, I for isoniazid. That is typically given for tuberculosis. C for cimetidine. This is uh, an antihistamine that's given as an, anti as an antacid, as an acid reducer, it is over the counter. K for ketoconazole, an antifungal. And a related drug, fluconazole. Both of those are antifungals. A for alcohol, but here we're talking about binging. So we talked about chronic alcohol use being something that that induces the P450 system. When we're talking about binging alcohol, we're inhibiting the P450 system. So an important distinction. C, for ciprofloxacin, common antibiotic. E, for erythromycin, another antibiotic. S, for sodium valproate. That's kind of cheating, right? <laughs> So it's valproate, uh, but it's sodium valproate. That's pretty much how all valproate is, but you, it just, to work with this mnemonic, we have to include the, the full name of the drug, it's the salt. So sodium valproate, you'll have to remember that. And this is used as an anti-epileptic drug and also can be used for bipolar as well. Uh, C for chloramphenicol. You probably won't be tested on that because it's not given anymore in the U.S. Uh, because of the side effects. O for omeprazole. This is another antacid used for gastritis and reflux and whatever. Um, it also is over the counter, so expect that to possibly be tested. And then M for metronidazole. 
Another common antibiotic, you may see it being uh, given for something like bacterial vaginosis and so forth. So like I said, with the inducer section as well, these drugs don't really have any rhyme or reason. So you just have to memorize them, but the mnemonic will, uh, will, will give you a leg up on that. So what are we talking about when we talk about an inhibitor? We're talking about a drug that was given and then uh, the, and the patient is on that drug. Usually it's something they take frequently. And then now they're starting on a new drug, an inhibitor, or it could be an inducer, but we're talking about inhibitors here. And then what happened was now they're presenting with some sort of syndrome or presentation due to the fact that the original drug is now at too high of levels because you've inhibited the metabolism of that drug. So typically you're going to be tested on one of these drugs, one of these substrates, where it would be symptomatic if you were too high. So that could be something like a beta blocker. So with a beta blocker, you could have too high of levels and that would cause bradycardia and hypotension and so forth. Warfarin, that's a common one when it comes to these inducers and inhibitors questions because you can be symptomatic with too high levels of warfarin with an inhibitor uh, because you would have too high of an INR and you would bleed or you could have symptoms if you're too low on your warfarin because you could have a clotting episode. And then another one is theophylline. Theophylline was uh, used to be given commonly for asthma. Um, it's not really given that much anymore, so I wouldn't worry about that one too much, but you can read into it if you want. Okay, so let's put this all together with a question. We have a 68-year-old man with a history of AFib who presents to the clinic complaining of bleeding from the mouth while brushing his teeth. He's found to have an INR of 5.3. That's too high. We usually want it 2 to 3, maybe 2.5 to 3.5. Um, which of the following medication changes is most likely to have precipitated this presentation? A, starting over-the-counter cimetidine. B, stopping over-the-counter omeprazole. C, increased dosage of carbamazepine. D, starting over-the-counter St. John's wort. Or E, starting griseofulvin. Now, this is a tough one, and I purposefully made this tough for you. So I want you to pay close attention here. So what do we know about all of these drugs? Well, first of all, let's back up. What do we know about this patient's warfarin. He's on warfarin and he started, uh, he started a new drug. We don't know what. Uh, and what happened to the warfarin level? Well, clearly the warfarin level went up because his INR went up. He's, he's now overly anticoagulated. So since we know warfarin is a substrate and the level went up, then we know that he must have been started on an inhibitor. Uh, but this question shows you some other options. He could have stopped something. So he could have started an inhibitor, but he could have also stopped an inducer. Uh, so, you know, this is why it's important to know your inhibitors and inducers. So we know uh, that he either started an inhibitor or he stopped an inducer. Now this is about as hard as I would expect the questions on the USMLE to, uh, to test you on this. So first of all, what are the inhibitors and what are the inducers here? So cimetidine, what is that? An inhibitor or an inducer? It's an inhibitor. Uh, omeprazole, inhibitor or inducer? Inhibitor. Carbamazepine, inhibitor or inducer? That is an inducer. St. John's wort, inhibitor or inducer? It's an inducer. Griseofulvin, inhibitor or inducer? That's an inducer. Okay, so either started an inhibitor or stopped an inducer. So as we see with A, well, he started an inhibitor. So that works, right? So we'll keep that. B, he stopped an inhibitor. That can't be right. C, he increased, or we could say started, uh, an inducer. So that can't be right. D, he started an inducer. That can't be right. And E, he started an inducer. That can't be right either. 
all four of these, B, C, D, and E, would actually cause a decreased level of warfarin, and so his INR would go down. So if the question maybe was different, if it was uh, he presents with an INR of 1.2, uh, which is too low, and um, he had a clotting episode or something, well then B, C, D, or E could be one of your right answers, um, but certainly the other ones would be would be different. So this is probably the hardest that I would expect the USMLE to throw this at you. Um, for the most part, you're just going to need to know the differences between the where what drugs are inducers and what drug are inhibitors. If you know these P450 substrates, uh, you won't be tested on that. Uh, you'll just need to know what these drugs, what any drug does. You need to know that beta blockers can slow the heart uh, down and cause hypotension if they're too high. Uh, warfarin, probably the most commonly tested one. If you have too much of it, you're gonna bleed. If you don't have enough of it, you're gonna clot and so on and so forth. So it will test your knowledge of the drugs for these substrates, but you will not be tested on which of the following is a P450 substrate. That's way too far into the pharmacology. You will be expected to know which drugs are inducers, which drugs are inhibitors, and how that could affect a patient's presentation. One last thing, going back to these inhibitors, there are a couple other drugs that aren't in this mnemonic that could come up. One is not even a drug, it's grapefruit juice. So grapefruit juice is known to inhibit the P450 system. Uh, and then one more is protease inhibitors. So protease inhibitors are given for, uh, for, uh, the, uh, for HIV. Uh, they all end, by the way, in Navir. So uh, if if you know that from your HIV drugs, then then you'll be uh, you'll be prepared. Uh, the the common one that's tested is ritonavir. So those are two things that don't fit in this mnemonic, and you'll just need to commit that to memory. So hopefully these two videos help you. If you understand this stuff, you'll be prepared for any question that comes at you on P450 inducers or inhibitors.